As a new content creator, you might be getting overwhelmed by all of the information that you run into about growing a YouTube channel. You might be wondering what you should focus on in order to get the most out of the efforts that you're putting into the content that you're making. And as somebody that's been making videos for YouTube for over nine years now, I'm here to tell you there's a lot of things that you can do that will keep you busy, but won't really make a difference when it comes to growing your YouTube channel. But there are things that if you focus on them will make a big difference when it comes to growing your channel. So I'm gonna lay it all out for you so you don't have to worry about wasting time on things that are not gonna make a difference at all. And we're starting right now. And by the way, if this is your first time here, my name is Nick. And if you wanna learn how to grow your channel and learn how to use all the tools that make content creation easy, make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss a video that could help you. First is consistency. Now, when it comes to consistency, a lot of people connect consistency to your upload schedule. When it comes to consistency, yes, publishing on YouTube consistently is an important thing. However, the more important thing is that you work the process of creating content into your lifestyle so that you can ensure that you're gonna be able to do it for a long period of time if that's something that you wanna do. And another part about consistency before we move on is it also helps you dial in your workflow because if you're doing something on a regular basis, then it's easy to remember what you did last time. It's easy to start remembering shortcuts that you take. It's easy to start remembering where you put everything on your computer and things like that. And it just makes the process a lot easier and helps you develop your workflow in a more efficient way. Plus, if you're gonna do the thing, you gotta do the thing. If you're not uploading videos on a regular basis, then you're not really doing the thing. The next thing that can make a really big difference with your channel is your ability to come up with really good video ideas. And I know that sounds obvious and it sounds general, but at the end of the day, if you have a really good idea, that video can do really good compared to just copying a bunch of stuff that everybody else is doing. And I'm not saying not to make videos that other people are making if you think that you can do a better version, but what I'm saying is if you can come up with some unique stuff that you mix into that, it can make a huge difference for your YouTube channel because you'll be either the one with that content or you'll be the first one with that content. But with that said, if you're just getting started on YouTube and you don't know what videos to make and you don't know how to come up with a really good unique idea yet, it's okay. You can look for videos where there's a proof of concept to where you can see another creator has made something similar and it's done well, which means that people have enjoyed that video. You can absolutely do that and make topically similar videos. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you really want to stand out and you really want to lead the pack in your niche, coming up with really good unique video ideas is going to be the path to get there. The next thing that will make a huge difference on your YouTube channel is taking the time to learn how to properly package the ideas that you do make videos on. Now, if this is your first time watching a video like this and you've never heard of the word packaging as it relates to YouTube, it simply means making your thumbnail and your title for the video that represents the video in an accurate way while also enticing somebody to click on it. This is a skill and an art form. You can make the best videos that anybody's ever seen. And if you can't get people to click on those videos, nobody's ever gonna see those amazing videos that you're putting out. When it comes to packaging up your content, it's important to think about your thumbnail and title when you are at the ideation process because if you can't represent the idea through a good thumbnail and title, then in that particular case, it's gonna be hard to get people to respond to that awesome video that you're making to that awesome, unique idea that you're putting out. So the process looks like this. You come up with the idea of the video that you're going to make, and then you think about how you're going to package that idea, what thumbnail that you're gonna make for it, and what title that you're gonna to write to compel people to click on it. If you do this before you make the video, then you can prove that that idea is a good idea and that you're going to be able to present it in the right way that will get people to click on it and then have a good experience with the video. As a part of packaging, it's important to think about how the thumbnail and title work together because they do work together as a team to win the click. The thumbnail grabs the attention and shares a little bit of information about the video, and the title is the thing that actually pulls the people into the video itself. The better you get at expressing your ideas through imagery, the better you're going to do. And one thing to make sure that you're keeping in mind is YouTube is in the process right now at the time of this recording of rolling out multi-language audio where creators are gonna be able to upload dubbed audio in different languages to their YouTube channels for every video that they create. In addition to that, you can also translate your metadata, your title and your description and your subtitles in your video. If you think about this now and you start packaging up your content where you're not relying on text to do all the work for you, then in that particular case, you're going to make your content more accessible internationally. That's a power tip for what's coming and the big opportunity that we have laying in front of us this year on YouTube. Okay, so you got your idea, you got your packaging for that idea. 
Next, once you publish your video, you need to learn how to measure the response because when somebody interacts with your video, YouTube is tracking how they're interacting with your content. And if you learn how to measure that response through the information that YouTube gives you, you're gonna learn how to make better videos faster. For some creators, this is the least fun and most boring part of being a content creator, but it is arguably one of the most important things that you need to make sure that you're focusing on if you wanna really grow your YouTube channel. When it comes to your YouTube analytics, these are some things you need to focus on. You can go ahead and write these down. The first one is your click-through rate compared to impressions. This tells you how good you are at getting people to click compared to how often YouTube shows your content to someone. This is also a way to prove that YouTube is showing your content to people. Number two is your audience retention reports. When it comes to your audience retention reports, they are a second by second graph of how people respond to your content on average. So what you wanna look for here is you wanna look for drop off points where people leave the video. You wanna look for spikes where people have rewound the video. That can also indicate that people have shared the video out at that particular timestamp. You wanna look for dips in the audience retention reports. That tells you people skipped that part. And you wanna look for flat lines. Those flat lines are gonna help you identify the content that keeps people watching and engaged the most. As a part of your audience retention report, you also wanna make sure that you are choosing from the drop-down menu compared to other videos. The reason that you wanna do this is because it shows you how competitive you're being against other videos of similar length on the platform. These graphs are available for your YouTube shorts, they're available for your long form videos, and they're available for your live streams as well. So you can really dig in and you can use these to get a really good understanding of what your audience does and does not respond to. Number three is you wanna pay attention to your audience tab. The reason for this is it's going to show you how many new people that you're getting in front of compared to regular subscribers that are just coming back and watching your videos. It's gonna show you other videos that people are watching on other channels. It's gonna show you other channels your viewers are watching. It's going to show you the formats of content that they are watching the most. It's gonna show you where they're watching from and it's even going to show you the best times to publish your videos based on when your viewers are online. So make sure you're paying really close attention to all all of those things because they're all really important and you can use all of that information to make better content for the people that you're trying to reach. Next, it's important to make sure that you're thinking about how you're linking your content together. Now, this is something that nobody really talks about, but when it comes to YouTube, it's important to think about over time, if somebody were to watch this video, what could I tell them to watch next on the channel? If somebody's coming into this particular video over here, what playlist or series could I make to where I can drive people into that playlist and then they can sit back and binge watch some videos? If you plan those types of things out in advance, it can help you create a better archive and it can also help you lead viewers through your content in a way that makes sense to them based on their interests and what they're coming to your channel for. For this, you can use your end screens, you can use your video descriptions, you can use YouTube cards, you can use playlists, you can use your channel page, you can use your community feed. Like there's a bunch of different ways that you can interlink all of your content together and make it easy for people to find more of the content they care about on your channel. So make sure that you are using these features and that you are thinking about how those paths could go so that you can kind of build those paths for the people that are interacting with your content. If you do this, you're going to get more views on your videos over time because you're making it easier for people to find more of the content that they care about. You're going to get more watch time for that same reason and you're going to get more subscribers because people are gonna be watching more than one video, which is going to cause them to want to subscribe to your channel once they see the additional value if they're a new viewer. So when it comes to your content, instead of thinking one video, one video, one video, think playlists. What can I build out as a playlist or a series and how can I link my content together to make those paths easy for my viewers to follow to find what it is that they care about on my channel? Next is distribution. So when it comes to being a content creator, obviously more views equals more impact and more opportunity. So because of that, it's important to think about where else can you put your content? So the way that I do it is I use a service called Opus Clip and with Opus Clip, it allows me to take long form videos and live streams and stuff and it automatically cuts them up into smaller chunks that I can then upload into YouTube Shorts or if I wanna put them somewhere else, I have the ability to do that. So if you are wanting to just get the most exposure possible, that's a great way to do that. I'll put a link to Opus Clip down in the description. It's also a really great way that if your content type supports it, if you end up getting busy to where you can't make content, that you can actually use some of those clips to publish content because you can do vertical content and you can do 16 by nine ratio content as well. It just gives you that opportunity to where you can make something 
out of content that you've already made if you're in a pickle and you're not able to stay consistent on the channel. So there's a lot of advantages to it. The next thing to really focus hard on is authenticity. So when it comes to YouTube, authenticity has always been a thing. It's been a huge core factor when it comes to YouTube, but a lot of content creators, especially when they're getting started, they'll come onto YouTube and they'll try to act like another content creator, or they'll try to act like a news broadcaster, or they'll try to act like one of the entertainment channels where they're screaming at the camera all the time and things like that. But keep in mind that those things are appropriate for some of the channels and content types where they do that, but it's not appropriate for everything. If you want to grow a community and you wanna really connect with the people that are on the other side of the camera, instead of taking that approach, try to just talk to the camera like you're talking to a friend. And when you do that, one, it's gonna make a huge difference in how you present overall, but it's also going to help you communicate in a more authentic way. To help with this, I recommend that when you're by yourself, and this is gonna sound crazy, so bear with me, but I recommend that when you are by yourself that you occasionally talk out loud like you're talking to someone that isn't even in the room. And again, I know this sounds crazy, but this will help you be able to communicate with the camera in a more natural way because you're gonna be practicing it when you're not in front of the camera. And the reason for this is because it's really easy when you're alone in a room and you're talking to a camera to talk at the camera. But in reality, you're talking to the people that are on the other side of the camera, just like I'm talking to you right now. So because of that, it's important to make sure that you're practicing that because it can be really easy to go the other way and talk at the camera instead of talking to the people that are actually watching your videos. And as a pro tip, when you're communicating, it's also helpful to think that you're talking to one person because if you start using language like, hey guys, in that particular case, then it becomes like, oh, hey, I'm just talking to a bunch of people instead of you, right? So as you're watching this right now and I'm talking to you, I'm looking in the lens and I'm telling you right now that it is you that I'm talking to. And when I have that approach and I'm using that approach, it makes it feel like, yeah, he's talking to me. And I'm sure as you're watching this, you can feel exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Whereas if I say, hey guys, this is what you guys need to be thinking about, it's a totally different thing because then it becomes about everybody and not about the person that's watching your videos. I know it sounds crazy, but focus on that and it will help you make better connections with the people that are watching your content. And most importantly, learn about the people that you're serving with your content. Learn about the things that they care about. Learn about the things that bother them. Learn about the problems that they're trying to solve. Learn about the things that they're most interested in. And over time, learn about what they want most from you. If you combine that with everything else that we've talked about, you're gonna do awesome. And look, if you're a new content creator, I just put out a video talking about grifters on YouTube and people that are trying to sell you stuff and mislead you as a content creator and all of that. It's a really informative video and people have really enjoyed it according to the comment section. So make sure you click into that video. I'll put a link to it right here. And thanks for watching this video and I'll see you over here in the next one.